Yo, what's going down, everybody? It is Straight to the Boston here, aka the King of Boston. Today we're back for episode 30, the big 3 0 for uh, my Colorado Rockies series here on Out of the Park Baseball 16. And today we're back with the midseason update for 2025. We are in year number 11. We are off to a great start, 37 and 17, entering uh, today's game against the Washington Nationals. We got the first year player draft coming up. But uh, first, we can take a look at how we've done. Uh, so we've been playing really good baseball as of late. Uh, we're first in run scored. This has got to be by a wide margin, too, because our offense has been absolutely tearing the cover off the ball. Uh, pitching has not been great. Our rotation has kind of struggled a little bit. We haven't gotten great production out of Gettys, Parsons, or Elias Miles. And Elias Miles has really started to regress. He was uh, up to like a four-star player at the beginning of the season. And now he is down to a half-star. So I'm thinking about sending him down. Um, but I'll talk about that in a sec. I might actually talk about that after the draft. But let's go to the offense, because the offense is literally just... I don't even know how to explain it. It's got to be maybe one of the best 50-game, you know, samples of production out of an offense I've ever seen. I mean, Thomas Dillard starting to, uh, you know, really come into his own. He's got his OPS up to 893, and he's bad at being 391, so this is not going to not gonna sustain. But still, uh, Goldschmidt, bad at being 364. He's got a 931 OPS and a 413 OBP, so he's playing really good at first base. Uh, we also picked up Ryan January, so I traded for this guy very recently, like a couple of days ago. Uh, I traded Brandon Murray for him. Brandon Murray is a guy I claimed off of waivers earlier in the year. And then that same day, I also picked up Todd Peters. I made a couple of minor trades uh, off camera. But January, I just wanted the better backup catcher. Alex Webb was doing nothing. And we also got money in this trade, so we didn't have to cover much of his contract, which was nice. Um, Danny Taylor... Got uh, 16 starts. He's got 89 ABs, hitting relatively okay. Dominic Foscalina is bad, but being 361, he's on pace for like 8.8 .8 wins above replacement, I think. Yep, there it is. He is uh, another guy absolutely tearing the cover off the ball. Uh, Nolan Arenado, probably the only guy on our offense really struggling. He's uh, probably having his worst season in a while with us. Ozzy Alves is having a fantastic season. He's bad, but being 325. It actually might kind of be sustainable. Um, but yeah, he's on pace for a zillion war. 5.2, he's having a fantastic season. He actually got hurt too. He's, you know, this would be 5.2 war in 105 games at his current pace. So having a good year. Uh, Jose Reyes, uh, pretty much, you know, the outfield doing what the outfield does. Each of them have OPSs in the 970s, 980s. I really don't even have to explain. And look at this. Uh, Yamada and Sky both have almost the exact same slash line. So, and Yamada's actually, you know, he's got a high war this year, so he's, he must be playing defense a lot better um, in center field. So, yeah, a team's just taking off right now. It's exciting to see. Um, we, I think we traded for, and we claimed Jacob Parrott off of waivers. Uh, he's a good defensive corner outfielder, and Matt Cain really wasn't getting the job done. So Parrott uh, comes in. He's pretty, pretty much the full-time backup outfielder. Now we sent down Chenko Park. And also, I'm going to get rid of Sergio Cruz here because his attitude is killing us. Uh, as you can see, we, go, we got a private uh, message from Terry Francona telling us that Sergio Cruz is really bringing things down in the clubhouse. So I'm going to get rid of his... Bum, bum, bum behind. But uh, I probably shouldn't have done this on camera. Whoops, a daisies. Uh, all right. Well, all right. So I'm going to move Sergio Cruz for this guy, Nico Buentello. Uh, the main reason being he's sort of an insurance option for uh, backup first baseman's job. Uh, and he's a left handed bat, which is perfect because uh, the only reason I want insurance there is if we do decide to make a move involving Danny Taylor. Uh, then it would still be nice to have another left-handed bat to come off the bench and, you know, spot Goldschmidt against righties and stuff like that. So, anyway, uh, we'll pick Buentello up. I think we can just send him right down to AAA. Might have to be on the 40-man, I'm not sure. Yeah, okay. We'll put him on the 40-man then. No issue there. To put him to AAA for now. Uh, and then we do need a new backup infielder, so we can call up... We could call up Esteban Ortiz, but I don't really want to start his service clock if he's just going to be... Um, coming off the bench, but he's having a really good year in AAA. If someone does get hurt, then Ortiz will probably get the call and uh, come up and fill in at shortstop. He can move all these around. Uh, but for now, we can call up Nick Shumpert. And the reason I want to call up Kendall Lequis is because he also has an attitude issue. I tried trading him, but I didn't really get any good offers for him. So, uh, yeah, we will throw Nick Shumpert back in there, and we'll look to upgrade that back up infield spot maybe as the year goes on through the waiver wire and stuff like that. But uh, let's get into the first-year player draft. So we're picking 30th, and we can skip ahead to the next pick from Colorado. All right, so we've got to look at all players here. Now, uh, the draft is pretty much the only thing that uh, Adron Chambers isn't really goddamn good at, so um, it's good to sort of supplement his ratings with the OSA ratings. Now, this guy looks like he's pretty good. Chad Reed coming out of college, and he's a slot guy, so that's nice. 
He'll definitely, if we don't pick him, he'll definitely go pretty soon. Uh, Ed Graves, another option. It looks like a middle infielder. Another college guy. And we do have a Compton. Oh, no, I guess. Do we have a... Yeah, yeah, we do have the Compton because we, uh, we have compensation pick because of our old friend Marco Gonzalez, who is actually uh, leading his Giants to a second place right now. They're also having a really good season. They're not too far behind us. All right, this Ed King guy looks like he'd be a nice pickup in the second round or the supplemental round, so... Let's go with, uh, I'm going to go with that outfielder, Chad Reed. Oops, let's do add Ron Chambers ratings. Yeah, we'll do Chad Reed, and then hopefully Ed King falls to the supplemental round. Or the comp whatever you call it, the compensation round. All right, actually, it looks like uh, Ed Graves did, too. So we go with Ed Graves or Ed King. King is 23. King might fall to the next round, so we might go with Graves then. Because Graves was the other guy who had a pretty nice ratings here. All right, and he's 21 years old, so hopefully he can help us out in the uh, short term. Soon enough, we'll grab him. Next pick is King gonna fall? Nope, Ed King got taken. So uh, let's look at the OOTP ratings. All right, so there's still some pretty good players here. Randy Lee, uh, three pitch pitcher. All right, it could be a good option. 88, 86, 88. So this is the type of guy who might not uh, really overturn it into anything, but at the, at the very least, he could be a nice asset for us. Timo Horny could also go with him. Ben Kramer. Whoops. Let's look at the OTP ratings. Kramer. Randy Larson looks like he might be half decent. Kind of like his ratings. Might go with Randy Larson. Ooh, or Luis Ramirez. All right, I think we'll go with Randy Larson, and then we'll see if that uh, if either the either of those top two guys fall to the third round. But I like Larson's ratings. I think he could turn into something. Let's see. All right, both these guys fell, so we could grab them both. Let's go with O'Horny. Next pick. All right, so the other guy got taken. What about the, any of these guys? Look for guys with good ratings. Uh, doesn't look like anything too special here. This guy might be half decent. Jorge Reyes, good defender. Might go with him. All right, I think we'll go with Jorge Reyes, and then we'll simulate the rest of the draft. Oh, whoops, we're going to have to go back here. Uh, here he is. And we haven't gone over a slot on anybody, so we have plenty of budget room left. Complete the draft. And we'll just offer contracts to all those guys. And then uh, I guess I'll set one thing up for you guys. I just want to... Uh, hit on two points here before I cut ahead to July 1st. All right, there we go. Uh, let's negotiate. We can offer Mike Smith and the rest of the guys. We can't do anything about All right, so uh, oh, there's a couple things actually I kind of want to hit on. All right, so two guys that are up for extensions at the end of the year are Steven Strasburg and Reagan Bazaar. So Strasburg, I'll hit on first. He's 36 years old. He's having a really good year. Uh, he's on pace for 7.6 wins of over place, and now I doubt he's going to keep this up. Um, and he's fragile, so he might get hurt at some point. We'll see about that. Um, but right now, if I go to offer him an extension, he's only looking for $9.5 million a year next year. So that I mean, that kind of concerns me because it makes me think maybe his rating is going to go down. Um, but at the same time, I mean, there's a chance that it doesn't, and then there's a chance that I get this guy for 9.5 next year. So I'm not really sure what to do with him. Um, I'm thinking this is going to be Jose Fernandez's last year. He's sort of having another okay season. He's got one more year in a team option. But uh, if I don't pick that up, then there's a good chance I could get the qualifying offer for him. Whereas if I try to trade him, he has 10-5 rights, and I probably uh, he'll probably veto that. So uh, I'm thinking this might be Fernandez's last year with the team. But uh, let's go all the way back. And then Reagan Bazaar is another guy who's having a really bad year, but he was really good with us last year. He's got phenomenal ratings. He's a free agent at the end of the year, and right now if I jump on him, I could get him for $7 million a year. No, it was 6.5 last time I checked. I'm wondering if I could get this down to like five and like maybe four years with the team option or something. I mean, I think I would do that. Bazaar seems like he's a really good reliever. Yeah, he's not liking that. I mean, maybe we could do six then. Do four years with the team option. I'm not sure if he's even going to like this one, though. All right, so I think we'll offer Bazaar this contract. It's a pretty reasonable contract, and he's a really good reliever, I think. He's just having a bad year. I'm not too concerned about him struggling in Colorado or anything like that because of the season that he had last year. So, All right, uh, we will uh, extend him, but I think Strasburg we might hold off on. I think I'd rather just play that out, and if we have to overpay him in the offseason, then we have to overpay him in the offseason. I'd rather not take the risk right now, So uh, especially because... 
you know, we might also want to just get the qualifying out for a minute. And I'm not really sure how many years. I mean, I I hate to say this, but I think you know this really might be one of the final years that we can that we're gonna contend with this group because right now our pitching staff in the future, like once Fernandez and Strasburg leave, it's gonna be barren. And I mean. Right now, we don't have the farm system to really make a move like that. We've suffered in the last couple of years because our head scout has not helped us out in the draft. And our offense is still really good, and we've got a lot of guys locked up for the future. And, you know, I think we have some some pieces to build around here still, and we'll have a great offense, but I just don't know what we're going to do with the pitching moving forward. So, I don't know. It's kind of a, we're in a tricky spot right now, but we'll see what happens. Um, so, I'm going to skip ahead now till around January 1st, and we will, or not January 1st, July 1st, and we will get back. All right, so we're back. It is July 2nd. Uh, we stumbled a little bit off camera. I think we maybe lost two or three straight series, but we've really bounced back. I think we won maybe six or seven in a row, I want to say. Um, at the end of June, we got hot. Yeah, so we ended up losing two or three to San Diego. Then we lose three or four to Texas and lose two or three to San Francisco. But we sweep LA, two or three against San Fran, and we've taken the first two against Arizona. So starting to play better. Back in first place, there was a moment there where San Francisco overtook us, but... Uh, yeah, the NL West is kind of looking topsy-turvy right now. Uh, LA is in fourth place. They're 13 and a half out. Now, obviously, we know LA. They can make second half runs, and I'm sure they'll be in the wild card hunt eventually. But, uh, you know, right now, they've got a bunch of teams they got to jump, especially in their own division. So, it's uh, pretty interesting. But, uh, Ronald Washington, jam. This is, see, I almost traded for this guy over Jose Reyes when I was uh, looking at him in that... Uh, Milwaukee deal and Washington looks like he's turned into a really good player in right and I could use him in center too but uh race not too bad himself so I'm not kicking myself over that one too much but uh, anyway so yeah we've got July 2nd let's look at the international amateurs uh all right so no one apparently uh that our head scout Adron Chambers thinks is worth and Chambers is I think legendary in scouting uh international amateurs so we can go after Manny Hernandez but um I mean, we might as well spend the money if, if there are guys like uh, on the OOTP ratings that are high, then we could probably pick them up if you wanted. But, uh, you know, because we do have the money to spend, we might as well spend it. It's only a $3 million cap. We can easily spend up to that, and we'll still have money left over to make trades and stuff. But um, let's do 1.6 for this guy. That puts us at, what, like 3, 2, 1.775. Uh, so we've got plenty of... Got plenty of dollar to spend. Tomas Morales can offer him 120. Pretty much just doubling these guys' demands. We're at a little over 2 million. Ramirez can offer 110. Um, Jesus Amaldonado. We got 150. And yeah, we're only at 2.3. We can go Juan Pagan. Can also offer him 150. All right, so we'll swoop in, pretty much snatch up anyone worth taking in that international market. Um, we'll keep simulating ahead here, keep taking a look at the waiver wire. I haven't picked up another middle infielder yet, so uh, we're still looking to fill that hole, although it's not really an important one. If we don't, I don't think I'll probably, I probably won't go out and make a trade for one. I'll just wait and see if I can find anyone off uh, waivers that's worth picking up. So we sweep Arizona, we've got three against LA. Lose the first one, all these guys sign. Excellent. So it was this three. It's actually four against LA. We got the draft pick signing deadline coming up. I think we got everybody signed. Uh, all right, expiring personnel info. So our assistant general manager and our team trainer are up this year, Mazeliak. Uh, I think I want to bring Mazeliak back. We've had pretty good success since we brought him on board. It, this position is really just insurance for a uh, scouting director. He wants one point one million a year, so why not? And team trainer Tony White. Uh, so I like guys who are good at preventing injuries, and this guy looks like he's pretty good at preventing he's preventing arm, arm injuries, which is important for uh, young pitchers. So I think uh, we will probably stick with this guy. Let's offer him four years. Perfect. All right. So we'll keep those guys around. Uh, don't care about midseason goals. Although, actually, I did change. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I changed. Uh, Keo One of our goals was, uh, you know, acquire a top six center field. And I realized all my outfielders were listed as right fielders. So I was like, oh, screw it. I'll just cheat the game and switch uh, Yamada's <laughs> position to center fielder. And then our owner will be pleased. And he's pretty pleased, it looks like. Dunk, Duck Hunter Yamada. So, all right. Um, what else do we want to do? Let's keep going here. Actually, we'll make sure we got everyone signed. Let's just uh, simulate this one day. All right, so we end up taking three of four. 
Yep, everyone who we wanted to sign signed. Also, Bazaar did take our extension, so we've got them for the next four years. I can't find that message, but oh well. Um, all right, Bo Bichette. We can take a look at this guy in a sec. Ooh, he's not too bad. I might like him. Makes the minimum. Very good defender. Yeah, I might claim him. It's not going to be a very good offensive player. And it looks like we've got a set in LA against the Angels. I've already got my DH lineup set, so we're fine there. But Bo Bichette will make a Colorado Rocky. Good guy, I assume. Consider one of the team leaders. Perfect. Shumpert, uh, yeah, not doing too well. We will send him back down. And we can activate. Oh, I didn't even mention Riley Pint got hurt. He, uh, what did he do? He tore his labrum in his shoulder. But he's back in four to five weeks, so he's, he'll be back soon enough. Um, but uh, we did call up Chris Richmond, who's having a pretty solid year. Bullpen, not been the greatest. Like I said, Bazaar's still sort of struggling. Aiken has not been good. And uh, I think, oh, yeah, I f almost forgot. So I think I might give Aiken or uh, Jonas Wyatt uh, a spot start over Miles here. Yeah, so let's go with Fernandez today. And then we're going to go with Wyatt. And uh, we're going to send Elias Miles down to AAA because he is really struggling right now. We can call up Cristo Delgado. Yeah, that's what I was waiting for. I wanted Delgado to get healthy. So we call up Delgado. Um, and then I'm going to give Wyatt a shot in that spot, and I'm also going to give Aiken a shot at some point, because his ratings are actually even going up still, which is nice to see. So, um, all right, so we've got what, one more game against LA here. We want to make Bichette add him to the active roster yet. I don't know if he did. It doesn't look like it. All right. And Bichette can play all around the infield. Oops. All right, copy, depth chart, and paste. And I don't want Taylor playing against lefties. All right, so we'll keep simulating ahead here. We got one more game against LA. Nick Shumpert's on waivers. He will not get claimed, I can already tell you that. Simulate one more day, then we can send him back down. Oh, Jesus, we've lost a couple games in a row here. Still in first place. Um, let's see if we can write things before the break here. We've got two more against Washington. All right, can we take the last one? Nope. Right. Goldschmidt. Ooh, Goldschmidt's out for four weeks. Okay. So that's a pretty big blow. We've been playing pretty well for us. Um, but luckily, we do have a pretty solid insurance option in Danny Taylor. Plus, we get another lefty in the lineup, which doesn't hurt. Um, we can leave Taylor. Yeah, we can leave Taylor in the six hole. That's fine. All right. And uh, we'll bring up that other guy, Nico Buentello. Oh, no, don't move Miles to closer. Why does the game do this? Oh, my God. I don't want Miles closing down there. Um, all right, Buentello. Oh, yeah, we can just copy and paste. Oh, shoot. Oops, it is ease. There we go. Okay, and we can copy and paste this. Then, please don't. Please don't make Elias Miles a closer. I need him to be a starter. Just gonna set him right back to starter after I, or closer after I do this. Though, I guarantee it. Watch, we'll just simulate one day ahead. Yep, there. Why? Why? Just leave him as a starter. It's what I. Oh no, he might turn out to maybe it's because of his stamina. That's not good. I wonder what trade value he has. Honestly, I need I need young pitching. I can't afford for this guy not to work out. All right, yeah, Elias Miles right now has no trade value, which is very concerning. Um, yeah, this was really the only team that we got a good offer from. Tristan McKenzie. I remember one guy in my stream wanted me to pick up this guy. I don't remember what I was streaming, though. Yeah, I'm afraid uh, we are not going to get anything. We're not going to get anything done with just Elias Miles. Yuck. All right, so I don't know what we're going to do, to be quite honest. Um, now, one thing we could try is... Uh, using Birdie as a starter. It's something like I, I've talked about in the past, but at this point I kind of don't really know if I want to mess with that. He's having such a good year as a closer. And he's just become a dominant goddamn reliever. So, yeah, I don't really want to mess with that. Um, I mean, we're fine, you know, using Wyatt and Aiken for now, but I just think long-term that's something we're going to have to solve. How did Wyatt do in his first start? He was not too good. Five strikeouts, four walks. But we'll give him one more start, then we'll maybe give Aiken a shot there. 
Uh, let's see who made the all-star team for us. We've got Steven Strasburg, who's 9-0. Oh, he's injured. No. Okay, uh, it doesn't look injured to me. All right. Um, whatever. As long as he's not actually injured. Zach Brady made it as a closer. Thomas Dillard. Imagine we had a zillion hitters. Goldschmidt. Foscalina. Reyes. Yamada and Baltimore. Entire outfield made it. Nice. Nicely done there. Uh, all right, and we can set up our pitching staff here in just a moment after we simulate through the all-star game and the all-star break. Um, it looks like the American League won. So we can go Strasburg to start. Change this to number one. Uh, and then maybe Fernandez, Gettys, Parsons, Wyatt. That works. Everyone's rested, so. All right, cool, perfect. Um, all right, and then we'll keep simulating here until around the trade deadline, and then I'll talk about uh, you know what I think we need to add to this team. I sort of already have a, a, a couple ideas in mind. I've been doing some research a little bit uh, off camera, so to say. But we got San Diego. We take two or three from them. Now we got Atlanta. Atlanta might be having a good year. I don't remember. Ooh, Brady Aiken out for three weeks. All right, that's gonna that stinks. Um. Now we should bring up Julio Urias so we can get this. Keep two lefties in the pen, oh, unless Urias is hurt. I oh, know he might just be his ratings might just be going to crap. Uh, yeah, here he is. All right, so move him up. His ratings are pretty much the same. We can switch him to relief pitcher. All right, and uh, yes, we still have two lefties in the pen. Jake Brents has been nah, he's been okay this year. He's not been great. But uh, we definitely need him as a lefty, so keep him there. Delgado needs to come down. Connor Manaus has been a pleasant surprise. I mean, this isn't that surprising. I kind of wanted to see what he would do with that, you know, really good fastball. But uh, he's been pretty good this year. So that is good to see. But let's keep simulating that here. Keep our eye on the waiver wire. Can we take two from Atlanta? No, we cannot. We've got Chicago. Ooh, Andrew Benatendi. Old friend Andrew Benatendi on waivers. Ooh, I saw Trey Turner on there, too. Seattle. Uh, I think he's having a pretty good year. Eh, Mike claim this guy. Fun guy to go with on a road trip. All right. Cool. Let's claim him. Probably be a better option than Bo Bichette. Bichetti. Bichette. I think it's Bichette. If it's supposed to be like Dante Bichette, then it's Dante Bichette or Bo Bichette or whatever. All right. Uh, so, I hope we didn't get him yet. Arnado wants an extension. He's not having a good year. I don't think I'm going to bring him back next year. Especially not for that price. No thanks. All right, and do we see? Yes, we do sweep Chicago. Nicely done. So Bichette, not really having a good year with this. Can we option him? Nope, he is out of options. But we will add Trey Turner to the bench. Uh, like so. Where is he? Trey. And Danny Taylor looks like he's getting hot, so that's good. We uh, have not been missing Paul Goldschmidt too much. Although it looks like he's been hitting for mainly singles, but still, 390 OBP. You're not going to complain about that. Yeah, he's got a home run. He's got a couple doubles lately, so. All right, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, he's having a good start. All right, so we got a couple days before the deadline here. Uh, what do we got? Three against Houston, then the deadline day. Okay. So, um... You know, I think we could use another starting pitcher. Obviously, we lost Marco Gonzalez in the offseason. Uh, Jonathan Geddes is improving, so that's good. I think, uh, you know, I feel I feel pretty confident about throwing him out there in the playoffs. Um, and overall, I feel pretty good about picking him up. I think he's been steadily improving. Hunter Parsons has had a decent year, and Jonas Wyatt uh, it's not look great. I definitely want to give uh, Aiken a shot at that starting spot. All right, so anyway, uh, back on topic here. I think what we could use is, a, is one more starting pitcher. Um... But the thing is, like I said, uh, we're sort of teetering on the point of maybe being a little bit past our window, um, at least in terms of the starters we have. So I kind of want to be careful here not to, uh, you know, not to invest too heavily into just one season. But there are two guys that I was targeting. One of them was Giovanni Lopez, although it looks like he already got traded. Um, but he is a free agent at the end of the year. Baltimore picked him up, but where where's Baltimore in the standings? Okay, so they're in fourth place. So they I think they'd still be pretty... Uh, quick to get rid of him I, I don't know if they've been playing poorly lately or why they went out and got Lopez but uh kind of want to see the package they gave up for him so they gave up 
Let's look at these guys. Pete Hennis, Tony Remus. I'm sorry, this really isn't even that good of a package. Give up one good first base prospect. So, uh, Lopez would be a good target. And then another guy who might cost us a little bit less, uh, but is also in the final year of his deal, is Matt Barnes. Making $20 million, but he's a free agent. He's had a really good year. And he's just a really consistent pitcher. And he sort of might fit the mold of what we're looking for anyway. We're kind of looking for a number three or a number four. Um, but he's durable. You know, he makes 30 starts every year. And he, he hasn't had a year with an ERA over four since becoming a full-time starter. So... I think he'd be a pretty smart pickup. It really depends on what the price is going to be for each guy. But uh, other than that, I think the rest of these guys all have uh, long-term contracts and, um, you know, it wouldn't really make sense. We're really just looking for rentals. Now, I mean, uh, you know, if, if we could get a good young guy for the future, it'd be ideal. But, um, you know, it's not really realistic to target guys like that. He's an oppositional personality. I don't know what that means about Luis Encarnacion, but uh, maybe it's a good thing we got rid of him. I don't know. Kyle Hendricks would be, could be another potential target. He's on a New York team. I don't know where this team stands in the standings, but he's having a good year. He's 35 years old. He's got one year left. Uh, it kind of feels like the type of guy that me and them might break down pretty soon, so I don't really uh, have too much of an interest in him. I definitely think Matt Barnes should be our number one target, though. Uh, he's had a really good year for Pittsburgh, and I don't know what they would uh, maybe want. I don't really want to give up Elias Miles, um, but if you go to Prospects... We could potentially do uh, some sort of package with, let's see. So we could do Freddie Vignal, who was our first round pick from last year. Uh, he looks like a pretty solid prospect, but could also kind of be a flop. I'm not really sure. It doesn't look like he's going to be anything special, that's for sure. But um, I think I'd be willing to part ways with him if it meant getting uh, another good starter. I don't really want to give up Ivan Nava. He's been one of our top prospects for a while. Although, honestly, he might have a lot of value. He's still only an A-ball. Mm, I don't know, that'd be an interesting guy to give up. Even his good ratings don't look that good. Like He's never going to hit for a high average. I don't know, Nava, Nava could be a good option. I mean, we have Dillard long-term. What else would Neil Huntington want? Greer, Holston, all right. So that, that, that'd be a pretty solid package, I think, Holston and these guys. What about uh, keeping Vignal, then, if we're going to give up Nava? Because Barnes doesn't feel like the type of guy I really want to overpay for. I know Luis Reyes has pretty good ratings. Uh, yeah, for the OSA. Takes more than he gives. I mean, I wouldn't be too opposed to giving up this guy, but I kind of would rather keep him. Um, what about... Let's see. I want to keep Ruben Rodriguez. Yeah, and I think I want to keep Vignal too because we might have some uh, some holes in our middle in our middle infield in the coming years if we can't re-sign Ozzy Albies and if we let go of... Um, Nolan Arenado, so I feel more confident about our outfield now. We still might need a long-term center fielder, but we could probably part with one of Ernesto Silva and, uh, or uh, who's the other guy? Oh, we could also part with Matt Cain. Ooh, okay, so Matt Cain. Yeah, Cain is a guy that I'd be, uh, he's a former first-round pick, but he's really struggled this year in those in that limited time that he had with us, so we could do him and... Maybe Wilson Cortez, Hector Moreno. Might do Wilson Cortez. Cervantes. What about this guy? Oh, he looks like he's nothing special. All right, I might do him instead then. Because Cortez still has like a two and a half star starting potential. All right, so we might do that. And then we keep Danny Taylor. So, all right, there's a nice Matt Barnes package. Kane, Nava, Holston, and Cervantes for a half year of Matt Barnes. Now, obviously, we wouldn't get the qualifying offer for him. Oh, and the guy I mentioned at the beginning of the year, uh, Jose Barrios. I should probably... Uh, I'll look at him for a sec. Uh, he ended up signing an extension with Minnesota, so they did keep him around despite their financial uh, troubles. So he's also having a really bad year. <laughs> Minnesota, I, Minnesota's not gonna be good for too long. I think they're uh, on their way down. But uh, all right, so we should at least do our due diligence and still look at the. Uh, um, this is the guy I really want, Mike Soroka. I love this guy's ratings, but um, he's locked up for New York. They're not gonna trade him. Uh, but we should do our due, due diligence and look at a Giovanni Lop Lopez package. Lopez is a better prospect to potentially re-sign. Um, I don't really love his ratings, but he's had some pretty good years in the past. Like It's not like he's been a bad pitcher. You know, He's on pace for another 4.7 win season. And, you know, he'd be a guy, who, like I said, is probably a, a better guy to re-sign than, uh, than uh, Matt Barnes. But, all right, so let's go back to the Matt Barnes package. I want to see what it was. Kane, Nava, Holston, and Cervantes. All right, so let's go to the Orioles. Um, let's do sort of similar thing. We'll go, oops, let's do prospects. 
um, we will look at Nava and we can even maybe part with uh, I don't know we gotta choose between Rivera and so that's kind of a tough uh, maybe I don't want to part with those guys I what might part with this guy though yeah I think I would um, doesn't look he moves the needle for them uh, what about Matt Cain doesn't look like they're really budging let's see Mm. Yeah, it looks like uh, Lopez might be a tougher get, so Barnes might be the way to go. And that really isn't too much to give up for him. He's a good guy in the clubhouse, it looks like. And he's not listed as durable, but he's durable in my book. <laughs> so, alright, I think we'll do this Matt Barnes package then. Uh, the only question is, can we save on any of these guys? Nah, I imagine we're going to have to give up. I don't think they're going to take too much less than him. Uh, yeah, unless you want to give up Luis Reyes, but I think I'd rather give up Ivan Nava. Yeah, all right. We could give up Danny Taylor, too, but same thing. I'd rather give up Nava than Holston, Kane, and Cervantes. I'm pretty much fine with giving up any of these guys. Kane, we can swamp with Cortez. I'd rather give up Kane. Luis Reyes. All right, yeah. So we'll just do this package then for Matt Barnes. And can we get any uh, good relievers out of this, potentially? Ooh, this guy's interesting. First round pick. Um, yeah, they don't really have a good bullpen, apparently. Oh, who's this guy? Jorge Martinez. Looks like he's going to be a good starter. Oh, you know what? This guy was like a top prospect pretty recently, um, if I remember correctly. Chen um, Ho Sing. Featured in the Phillies franchise. Yeah, all right. So, I think we're fine there. Uh, unless they have any good relief prospects. But I don't imagine they're going to give up any of these guys. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um... Chris Bradley, maybe. Yeah, we get Chris Bradley. Why not? Cheap. Oh, he's a Rule 5 pick. Oh, so that means we'd have to keep him on the active roster. No thanks. All right. So we'll just do this, then we'll pick up Matt Barnes. Uh, we can move Wyatt back to the bullpen. And we can send Delgado back down, maybe. Wyatt to the pen. And we can add Matt Barnes to the mix. All right, so we pick up an extra starter. I think that's what we needed. Um, all right, yeah, he's going to need the full five days of rest. Looks like he just pitched. Thank God he didn't get hurt. So um, now the only other thing I'm thinking is we could probably use another uh, high-end reliever. So I might look for that off-camera. That's going to be a little harder to look for. So I think I'll look for that off-camera and then come back to you guys when I find a good deal. All right, so uh, first things first, I found a pretty uh, funny trade here with the L.A. Dodgers of all teams. They were one of the rebuilding teams. Um... And, uh, yeah, I guess they're giving up on this season. Ryan Burr's available. He's day-to-day -day for a little while. He's got back tightness, but he's had a couple good seasons lately, and I do like his ratings. So uh, it's a pretty good pickup, and all we have to give up is Bo Bichette, the guy we just DFA'd, and I never shows any lack of effort. That is perfect. So cool. We'll add him to the mix, and um, we can... Also, I'm thinking about uh, bringing up uh, Elias Miles and trying him out in the bullpen since it seems like his ratings play out better in a bullpen role anyway. So uh, we could send down. Okay, so here's the other thing. I might, uh, I gotta maybe play with this idea. I'm not too sure about it. Uh, first things first. I gotta. Okay, I should set it up first. So go to the Angels. Now the Angels were one of the teams that were interested in Elias Miles, and they offered up a role to Chapman. So Chapman, uh, still a very effective reliever. He's having a really good season, um, but he makes a lot of money. He's got 15.6 guaranteed for next year. And he's got a $14.9 million vesting option, but I can make sure that that option doesn't vest. It's 40 games finished. That's not going to be hard. Um, I just won't set him as the closer. It's simple as that. Uh, so anyway, I could, I could be a really good pickup, and uh, I wouldn't give up Elias Miles for him. Oh, he's got me first attitude. God damn it, Chapman. I don't know. I really think it'd be a good pickup, though. I know it kind of be bad for the clubhouse, but if you really want to have a dominant bullpen... And it would cut. It could. We could give up Jonas Wyatt for him. I'd be pretty fine doing that. I just. I don't know how much does his attitude bring down the team. Oh man, their team chemistry is not good. So I don't know if that's really a good idea. I might uh, just stick to uh, adding the guy from the Dodgers, Ryan Burr, and uh, might even put him on the disabled list. He's Thirty-one percent. Yeah, I think we should put him on the disabled list. All right, and uh, we can call up Elias Miles then. Yeah, all right. At least that way we we can control his development. Um, 
And we can send, maybe we can DFA Jonas Wyatt. Doesn't really look like he's ever going to work out, his, even though I like his ratings. Um, he might have trade value, though. We, we should at least see. I mean, we got our oldest Chapman offered for him, so we'll see uh, what his trade value is. All right, so we did get some pretty good offers for Jonas Wyatt. Uh, I might take one of these at least. Even a guy like Aaron Sayers it makes a lot of money, but uh, still, that sort of is an indication of the value that he has. Looks like the Red Sox got some bad contracts on their hands, though. Jesus. Uh, we get Francisco Lindor back. What did he get? $10 million a year in free agency? That's really not a bad contract, to be honest, but he's 31. Um, let's see. I mean, even if we could just get another good reliever. Jonathan Wintham. Ooh, I might like this deal. Third baseman. Hmm, yes, I think I like this, because he could potentially replace Arenado next year. Riley Hogan. Tom J. Murphy. Nolan Sandburn. No Marmazar, guy on the team from last year. He's having a good year in St. Louis. In St. Louis. Ooh, what about this guy, Corey Zangari? Looks like a pretty solid reliever. He's not having a good year, though. Yeah, he doesn't look... He's Really got the good production. Joey Gallo. Get him back. And Mike Poppy. Don't really have a need for either. Alright, I might take the... Uh, I think I'm going to take this Jonathan Wyndham trade, though. And I can institute him probably... I, I don't know where I'm going to fit him on the team this year. He probably has options left, but I don't think he would really like to be sent down. But I might do it anyway. Alright, so let's, let's pick up Jonathan Wyndham. Whoops. All right, cool. And the Wyndham, where is he? Here he's a good guy, yeah, good at no shoulders. All right, so uh, I could put him as the backup first baseman for now, but that really doesn't solve the issue long term. Send Buentella back down. And I can put him as the backup corner in infielder. I know he doesn't really play first base, but that's uh, just details anyway. Oh, and you know who we could send down actually? We actually, we traded Matt Cain, so we have an extra roster spot. So, yeah, that actually works out just fine then. We can keep Wyndham on the active roster. Um, we got to add Elias Miles, and we still have an extra spot. So, we could actually call Buentello back up. That's fine. And leave Buentello as the backup first baseman. And then we should have Wyndham play like every third game for Arenado. Um, so, I, I like that deal. I'm glad we got something for Jonas Wyatt. It's a guy we got off waivers. So, or I think we might have traded for him, but we gave up nothing for him in the first place. So. All right, um, and then pitching wise, we can move Miles. I'll keep Bizarre as the setup man, but uh, I think uh, if Miles, you know, performs, I might use him in some more high leverage spots. So, all right, we'll see on that. But anyway, that is pretty much gonna do it. So let's uh, simulate past the deadline here. Unplug my computer. Um, all right, so let's try this. We got the top of the rotation here. Barnes not making his first start for a couple more days. Maybe I'll simulate up through uh, Barnes's first start. We can actually bump him in the rotation if we want because we got this off day. Ooh, Arenado, just like that, Arenado gets hurt. So that was good timing on the Wyndham uh, pickup. So let's put him in the starting lineup. Yeah, we'll bat him last. Taylor to first. Uh, can use Turner as the backup third baseman still. And then we still have a extra roster spot. I should copy the lineup too. Uh, I don't know what we're going to use this roster spot. We might pick up, or we might add another outfielder. Um, all right, and then we can move Barnes one day ahead because we got this off day. Um, can worry about that last roster spot in a second. We actually have to set our DH lineup for Matt Barnes' first start. Uh, let's see, when our guy's getting healthy is the question. Goldstrom's back in a week. Ooh, Pint and Berg, any back soon, so that's going to add even more depth. And Aiken, so our, I think, I don't know, I'm hoping our bullpen will be... We'll be good. I don't know. We'll see. Um, and Barnes is fully rested. Yep. All right. So let's... Uh, I don't know what we're going to do. That. I'm going to have to figure that out. I'll figure it out off camera, though, because I really just want to get this done. Let's put... Maybe we could start Trey Turner. Play second base. All right. Yeah, we'll start Trey Turner at DH. Even though it leaves us with zero backup infielders, but... Oh, in that case, actually, maybe we should call up a... Uh, why is our lineup have holes in it? That's weird. Let's copy and paste the step chart then. All right, and then we'll call up... Uh, 
Not Esteban Ortiz. I really don't think he's going to perform well if we add him to the club right now. Um, all right, so we can call up Jeff Gray then. Oh, actually, we can call up Nick Shumpert for now. All right, and then Matt Barnes' first start. Oh, Jesus, he got smoked. What the hell? That's not a, that's not a good sign. Jesus. All right, look at his... <laughs> He's got a 37 ERA with Colorado now. All right, pulling in, pulling in Eduardo Rodriguez. One and two thirds, seven innings or seven runs. But all right, so oh, and Justice Sheffield having a fantastic year for Minnesota. It looks like that uh, that one stings. But oh, oh well. All right, so that is gonna do it. I hope you guys did enjoy this episode. Oh, it looks like God damn it! Is everyone just do we traded away? Gonna start doing well now? So what's gonna happen? All right, that's gonna do it. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoy. And I'm out. Peace.